Hello, students. Welcome back. I'm your teacher Roxy, and I'm glad that you're here. If you are new to this channel, please do like, subscribe, and share this video lesson, and also hit the bell button for you to notify with my new video lessons to come. Today, we will going to talk about Health Education 8, Lesson 3, Quarter 2, which is Pregnancy-Related Concerns. After marriage, a couple's desire is to build a family. Humans are reproduced through sexual reproduction. In this kind of reproduction, the reproductive cells of man and woman join together to make a new human cell. This process is called fertilization. Fertilization is a reproductive process, wherein half of the genes of the father and mother combine to form a single cell. The new cell then divides and forms more cells. This ball of cells enters the uterus and attaches itself to the uterine wall. The attachment of the developing cells to the uterus is called implantation. Pregnancy is the term used to describe the period in which a fetus develops inside a woman's womb or uterus. Pregnancy usually lasts about 40 weeks or just over 9 months as measured from the last menstrual period to delivery. Now, what are the preparations for pregnancy? If the wife is already prepared to get pregnant, she should seek a preconception advice from her doctor, or general practitioner, or a midwife. A general checkup is necessary especially if you have health conditions like diabetes, depression, high blood pressure, and epilepsy. Now, here are some of the do's in preparing for pregnancy. First is. See your doctor for advice. Second is. Ask your doctor if you need vaccination. Third is, discuss with your doctor your family health history. Next is, avoid cigarettes, alcohol, and illegal drugs, which may affect the development of the anticipated baby. And last is, check if your workplace or work is safe for a pregnancy. Most of the time, failure to conceive or to have a baby is due to any of these conditions. Let me discuss first the blighted ovum. Blighted ovum happens when the egg is fertilized in the fallopian tube and attaches itself to the uterus, but the embryo failed to develop. A pregnancy sac or the amniotic sac developed but the individual embryo inside did not. This may just lead to miscarriage. Next is ectopic pregnancy. A zygote or fertilized egg was formed, which is an assurance of a new life. But the embryo failed to attach itself to the uterine wall, where it should grow, and develop. The embryo is implanted outside the uterine cavity. This condition poses danger to the mother, and the removal of the embryo is justified. Next is the polycystic ovary syndrome, or PCOS. It is an endocrine disorder which may cause female subfertility. PCOS causes an ovulation, excess androgenic hormones, and insulin resistance. An ovulation means failure of the ovary to release ovum, or egg cell. Irregular menstruation, amenorrhea, and ovulation-related infertility are the effects of an ovulation. And last is, myoma, or fibroid. It is benign, or non-cancerous tumor that builds in, or around the uterus. Among the symptoms of this condition are abdominal, pelvic, or lower back pain, heavy bleeding during menstrual period, or menorrhagia, longer than normal menstrual periods, urgent need to urinate, and vaginal bleeding between menstrual periods. Now, let us talk about the health conditions that may occur during pregnancy. First is the preeclampsia. It is a condition wherein the pregnant mother experiences high blood pressure and high amount of protein in urine. It should be closely monitored because it may lead to seizures which is very dangerous for both the mother and the baby. Second is the placenta previa. It is a complication wherein the placenta is inserted in the lower uterine segment, maybe partial or whole. This is very critical because the fetus relies on the placenta for food and air coming from the mother's body system. It may also lead to premature delivery of the baby, because this condition causes bleeding, which is an initial symbol of untimely birth, or miscarriage of the baby. 
and last is the gestational diabetes. It is a condition wherein a mother who is not diabetic acquires high level of blood glucose during pregnancy. The insulin receptors of the cells do not function properly due to the presence of human placental lactogen, which facilitates the supply of energy to the fetus. The insulin receptors bridge the glucose molecules to enter the cells. Since the insulin receptors do not function properly, most glucose molecules remain in the blood resulting to a high blood glucose level. A high blood glucose level is the cause of gestational diabetes. Now, what should be observed at post-pregnancy? First is the postpartum disorder. After giving birth, the mother would have mood swings because of hormonal fluctuations or changes. It happens three to five days after delivery, and it eventually normalizes as the hormone levels become stable. This mood swing is also known as postpartum blues, or baby blues. You might have seen a mother who would always cry after giving birth. This is a part of the baby blues. And next is, sepsis. It is a severe blood infection, which results to fatal body inflammation. It may lead to organ dysfunction, and may continue even if the infection is gone. It may be caused by the bacteria, viruses, fungi, and parasites in the blood, or other organs of the body. The mother, and the baby can be infected by sepsis, although the baby would always be affected, since he or she has a weak immune system. Sepsis may come from unsanitary hospitals, or from invasive devices like intravenous catheters, or breathing tubes. The weak immune system of the baby is one reason for contacting this infection. Remember, pregnancy is a time of many changes. The body of the pregnant person will experience physical and biological changes. It also influences the emotional and mental aspects of the person. And that is all for today. I hope you learned something new about our topic in Health 8. We'll see you again on the next topic. Thank you and keep learning. Goodbye.